Hello everybody. So in this video I'm going to talk about how histories and stories play a very important role in our lives. So let's get it started. We should realize the importance and significance of history and stories in shaping our reality about the world we live in. Studying the past gives us an understanding of how the world came to be and about a place in the universe. To a large degree, our decisions and mentality are shaped by our history, the stories we heard, and many such things whether we realize it or not. History is nothing but a set of stories carrying some ideology, but not every story is linked to history. One of the things that makes us unique among our earth-dwelling family members is our inherent need for tales and stories. And this is what makes us humans and the wisest species on this planet, because it structures our mind with it. I would rather consider stories to be the fourth need for our survival because they are created only if it can affect our lives in some way. They have some meaning and have played some significant role in our decision-making ability. And it's these same stories that have shaped the world to the impact it made for hundreds of years. You've likely heard that storytelling is important for business, marketing, and life in general. Likely, you've heard that it's a powerful tool and has the potential for massive lasting impact. And not just that, we are so addicted to stories that even when our body goes to sleep, the mind stays up all night telling himself some stories in the form of the dreams. These stories motivate us to work, experience things, travel, explore and positively influence our social behavior. Stories in general have a unique ability to build connections among humans because it can help in social bonding and sharing perspectives. But I assume stories to be like parasite, bacteria and viruses because they only work if they have a host to survive on. And like any microbial organism, the need for copulation is eminently desirable for it to multiply. That's why this parasite targets a host to copulate and they eventually find one anyhow. So that's how stories act. They desire to spread themselves from one individual to another so as to survive. And if you don't know anything about something, it's because you haven't encountered or met anyone contagious or infected with the information. The thing with stories is that they don't come with any instruction manual about how one should pursue or think about that story. It's just some unique interpretation we make when the story hits us and it related to some aspect, experience of our life or some preconceived notion. Not all stories have to be based on real incidents. We love various types of stories because it triggers various parts of our brain. We love fantasy-based stories because it triggers our imagination. We love science fiction stories because it triggers our inner abilities and so on. But even if these stories aren't real incidents, they still leave a message. A lesson to us humans. We are thoroughly desensitized by their weird and witchy power. But we don't just share information randomly with anybody, even though we have those stories in our mind ready to explode and multiply. We are selective and desire to have good inner judicious process with regards to whom we are supposed to share it because their reaction matters to us. So we bring up the stories in our conversation with our friends, family, relatives, etc. If not possible, then some we will write it down somewhere. But with the same agenda that is to be read by someone because for it to survive. But why do we want to share it in the first place? The thing about humans and any other intelligent species in general is that we like to form our own group. But it's just us humans who could add multiple dynamics to this objective term group, at least in the context of stories. Here the objective meaning to the term group would be simply some individuals with, with whom you prefer to be or hang out with. And what I mean by adding multiple dynamics to the word group goes in two different unique ways. First is when we become a part of something bigger than ourselves where dependence, reliability, and loyalty among one another becomes important. You might have experienced this feeling in your school days when you tend to be loyal to your house. You might not like someone from your house personally, but still willing to collaborate and have a soft corner towards them for the greater good of the house. This is a subconscious feeling one goes through. Nobody enforces this loyalty feeling in you, but you subconsciously follow it. The second type of groupism feeling is when we form multiple groups in our mind consciously where we sort out individuals who possess the same opinions to a certain story, likes, dislikes or some common ideology. We meet many peoples in our entire life and not everyone has similar preferences and mindset. 
So we segregate people on various subjects and contexts, where someone likes a thing and another individual likes some other thing. And as the story desired to survive, we would select the individual with whom we believe our story has better chance of survival. The reason we chose to tell a story or decide to tell a story is that we want the story to exist and we desire the same result while sharing the story with anyone. Every quote ever written by any great personality is a result of their story or interpretation from any experience. These stories have shaped many lives and still continue to do so. Their stories don't just shape our mindset as a whole. On a broader level, even our economy, culture, beliefs are affected by them. These stories will exist and would hold a great value for humans overall, whether it's on some paper or in someone else's mind.